You are listening to The Bible Breakthrough with Pastor David Engman and Scott Brecky. In this study, we will break down the Bible from B.C. to A.D. chronologically while offering historical context and real-life application for today. This series is brought to you by the Breakthrough Media Network. Hi, my name is Pastor Dave Engman, and this is Scott Brecky. And we want to welcome you to the Bible Breakthrough, and we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, ultimately, as always, our goal is to lead you into a deeper, more intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And this is the bonus episode. Um, so w- welcome. We're glad you're here. We're going to be uh, diving into the Trinity a little bit, and we will be discussing also um, reigning, um, talking about reigning and ruling, governing things. Yeah, governing, ruling, yep. reigning, yeah. Uh, in the last uh, episode uh, that we just covered here, we read uh, Genesis chapter one, one, and we read read through uh, starting at verse twenty-four. Is that what it was? Yeah, twenty-four verse or er, uh, yeah, yeah, Genesis one. one twenty-four. Yep, through uh, Genesis yep. two chapter uh, verse four. Yep. Boy, that's a tongue. <laughs> you, you got it. I'm tongue-tied there. It's like, <laughs> get on the page here. Um, again, we're in the uh, account of creation, and there was just topics that come up uh, during the episode uh, that we felt maybe it would be beneficial to dive in a little deeper on and, and just have a little bit more relaxed um, dialogue around. Uh, I'm going to start with Trinity. Uh, We talked about the Trinity uh, as it pertained to verse 26. It said, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. Mm -hmm. And the question that I asked Scott was, who do you think he's referring to when he says, let us make them in our image? Yeah. And so Scott went into discussion about God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We refer to that as the Trinity. Mm I'm going to read this. It says, uh, why does God use the plural form, let us make human beings in our image? Now, one view says that this is a reference to the Trinity, God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and and the Holy Spirit, all of whom are God. However, there's another view, uh, and that view is that the plural wording is used to to denote majesty. Kings traditionally use the plural form in speaking of themselves. Uh, The grammar doesn't decide the matter for us, but in either case, it is God who created humans in His image. And Mm -hmm. God has revealed Himself to us as a trinity, clearly through the whole of the Scripture. So, God the Father has always existed. Um, we read in John 1.1 1, 1 about um, the Word always being with us. The Word was, yeah. f- since the beginning, um, the Word was with us. The Word was Jesus. The Word is God. Yep. So we clearly see these, and then we know that Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, um, mm-hmm. and of course, He did. Those are the three elements that make up what we refer to as the Trinity. What are your thoughts about the Trinity, Scott? Well, I mean, I I obviously believe, I believe in all three. Um, I think it's probably the easiest to understand Jesus because he's a human flesh being like I am. Um, the Holy Spirit, you know, there was a part, maybe a walk in my Christian life where I didn't understand that really well, but now I do very well. Um, and then... I mean, it's just, I mean, God the Father, I I understand that. Jesus refers to, um, actually just this morning, I was reading how one of the disciples like, hey, show us the Father, show us the Father, right? And Jesus is like, look, you're basically looking right at him because I, the Father is in me and I am in the Father. So how can you say, you know, show me the Father? I'm showing, basically showing him to you Mm -hmm. because I only say what my Father tells me to say and I only do what my Father tells me to do. So... Um, so yeah, I believe in all, all three. I believe in the Trinity. Um, 
So, you know, the Bible uh, later on in the New Testament, uh, Jesus is talking to his disciples at the end of uh, his earthly walk. And he said, you know, soon I'm going to be leaving you. Now, they didn't understand that. And he even even said that to him. He said, you know, you're not going to understand this, but soon I'll be leaving you. And when I do, I'll be going to the Father Mm -hmm. and I will ask the Father to send an advocate Uh, the Holy Spirit who will be your helper. Mm -hmm. And that'll be better for you. You see me here now. I'm I'm ad-libbing here, but you see me here now. But soon uh, I will be in you. The Holy Spirit will be in you. Mm -hmm. And so the Holy Spirit does dwell within those who believe. And that was the promise that we uh, would receive that. Holy Spirit, yeah. and become the, the actual temple. Yep. At that time, um, we became the temple of the living God. Well, I think too, what, just in that story that you just said, interesting was to me that, that he told them, you're not gonna get this at first. You're not gonna understand this at first, but you will. So there's a lot of things that in this Christian walk and in the Bible, you'll read through and you have no idea what that means. You have no understanding at it. But there will be lots of times where things will come later and you'll be like, oh my goodness, mm. I remember that scripture now. I understand yeah. it now. So there will be those, those times where you're just like, man, Lord, I just don't get this. You know, and it's like, it's, it's going to be okay. You know, I feel like the Lord's like, it's going to be all right. I, I've strategically maybe have even done this, kept this from you because maybe you're not ready for it yet. But I could see the disciples, right, with Jesus walking and be like, him telling me this and be like, what do you mean you're leaving? <laughs> No, no, I don't want you to leave, you know? He's like, no, this is better. Trust me. Just trust me. It's going to be better for me to leave and send you the Holy Spirit than it is for me to stay. And I think about that aspect too because just think of this. Imagine if Jesus would have stayed on the earth longer than he had, right? I think about he would have, he would have, you know, being a, a human flesh, knowing that, that, you know, we all die at some point, he would have just died just like every other person, right? He would have got to, you know, let's say 80, 90, 100, 120 years old, whatever. He would have died just like every other person. But he didn't, and he he died and then rose from the grave and then left the Holy Spirit, which is better for us because now the Holy Spirit dwells in every believer through all time, right? So um, I'm just so grateful that for that verse. But it is sometimes hard to be like, how could that be better? How could that be better than... For, for you to, to, to um, leave us. What does that mean, Lord? What does that mean? Hmm. When you pray, who do you pray to? God. Do you ever pray to Jesus or do you pray to the Holy Spirit? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is there, I mean, you know, I, I just bring it up because yeah. I think it's, I think I it's interesting. Sometimes you'll hear people and, and they'll talk about God the Father and they'll only talk to God the Father. And, yeah. And then there's other groups of people who only... When they pray, at least out loud, they pray, you know, to Jesus. And, yeah. and then, of course, there's others that, you know, talking about Holy Spirit, you know. Yeah. I'm just curious what your thoughts no, are. No, that's that. interesting. I would say, I mean, just looking back on, you know, when I pray, I'm talking to God and I, in Jesus' name. Um, I don't know if I strategically, like, would say I pray to the Holy Spirit, but that makes me think about, about that. So, hmm. Why wouldn't you? I mean, the point is, is all three are God. Yeah. We only have one God. Yep. We only pray to one God, depending, I suppose, on the circumstance, right? Maybe it would change the, uh, you know, who you're acknowledging at that moment. Right. Um, Hmm. All right, well, let's move on to the second point that we were going to talk about. Yeah. I, I paused for a minute because there was something uh, that I had and I was going to bring up, and uh, it seems to have escaped me. <laughs> so, you know, of course we read God creates, created the heavens and the earth, uh, yeah. right, in, right in the very first verse of the, of the Bible. Mm-hmm. And uh, we recognize that he created everything that lives 
based upon the first six days of creation. Uh, and then in verse 28, it said that God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it, reign yeah. over the fish, the birds, and the animals. So govern and reign, mm -hmm. two words that I, I, they jump right off the page at me. We are called to govern and reign. Uh, what does govern and reign over so mean I'll, to you? I'll stick on the reign part because that's kind of, I think, how I understand it a little bit better. So I just, you know, kind of quick Googled that word and, and um, I kind of got the understanding of like an example of a king or queen, right? So the qu king or queen r uh, reigns over the... Um, the certain area that they're in charge of, like their uh, kingdom. Yes, yes. So, qu quick uh, example: Queen Elizabeth reigns over the United Kingdom, right? So she's like the the head, the the one who's on, at the top. You know, there's no one above <laughs> that. So that's just what I think. Like God made us to reign over the other things that He created. Um, so the the animals and the birds and the fish. Um, we're to reign over them. And we see sure. that, right? We don't see animals in control of the, the people like some. So, yeah, so the um, reign over something has to do with having absolute authority mm -hmm. and control over. Now, God had ultimate and absolute authority and control, and he delegated it right here yeah. in verse 28. He delegated that to humans. And he said, I want you to reign over. In other words, I want you to, I'm delegating, I'm giving you a part of the authority that I have. I'm sharing that authority with you. Um, and he expects us to exercise that authority in a way that honors others and the earth, right? Sure. Um, he expected us to take responsibility for the environment, as it says here, and other creatures that share the planet, and uh, encourages uh, us not to be careless and wasteful as we fulfill this charge. Um, God was careful how he made the earth, and he wants us to take care of it. Now, governing it would, in the same context that you brought up, a king or queen, Elizabeth in this case, yep. she is um, reigning over the kingdom and governing that kingdom. Mm -hmm. And governing is a form of managing it, yep. right? She has the authority to reign over it and through the governing aspect has the ability to delegate the rules mm -hmm. and oversee those. Um, yeah, that's... that's uh, that's an interesting thought. How are we doing, do you think, on the earth? With it? And as it pertains to governing and reigning over the earth and the animals and so forth. Well, I think we're doing it, but not very well. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, we just look around the world today, I mean, you just see chaos and fighting and war and just horrible, horrible things. So we've definitely um, started maybe reigning over each other, which that's clearly not what God says. It says to reign over the um, everything else, but not each other. And we've taken that to the extreme. I mean, man, you killing all over the place. I mean, we're right in the heart of, you know, our ministry is in the heart of downtown Minneapolis, and it's, I mean, you can see it the last couple of years. It's just been really, really bad. So, hmm. so we reign, but not well. <laughs> Govern and reign. Yep. So um, you hit on a, an interesting point that I think, and that had to do with uh, maybe more about what God doesn't say here mm -hmm. um, than what he actually does say, and that um, he's given us the authority to delegate, he's delegated that authority to reign and to rule over the earth, the animals and the fish and so forth, but not over each other. Mm -hmm. Yet we see a lot of that. And, you know, God gave us a spirit, um, and our spirit, when, when in concert with the Holy Spirit, produces fruit. In Galatians 5.22, it 
we see nine fruits of the Spirit that are laid out there. And the last one is the uh, fruit of the Spirit of self-control. Yeah. And uh, I think that's a, a interesting thought, that we were given a spirit of self-control, not other control. Hmm. So when we try to control other people, we meet resistance, right? Hmm. Because we weren't created to be Thank controlled you know. by yeah. others. Now the Bible, you know, will clearly speak to us having um, respect for authority yeah, coming and under. coming under yeah. that authority. Yeah. Um, but I think what's interesting about that is doing that is a choice we make. We should choose to come under the authority of government leaders, for example, of church leaders, for example, um, of our managers at work yeah. and our bosses and so forth. No. These are choices that man makes. And when we feel like somebody has usurped the authority they were given and then abuses that authority, again, we see the clash, right? Mm -hmm. Because we were created to rule, to reign, and to govern over everything except each other. So when it comes to governments all across the world, all the nations of the earth, you can see certain nations of the earth that the people of those nations either choose to <laughs> come under those authorities or they rebel against those authorities. And um, just an interesting thought as we were reading and, and, and looking at this, uh, you know, um, I guess I'd say this, if, if you're not operating out of, uh, of the spirit of self-control, then the question would be, what spirit are you operating out of, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this is the spirit of others' control. It might be an application point too, right? Like if, uh, if we are trying to control other people around us yeah. and we're meeting it with resistance, yeah. uh, maybe we need to hold the mirror up and look at the mirror and recognize what role we play in that problem. Mm -hmm. Right? Because in any problem that exists, right, there's, there's an element um, that we have to recognize we might need to own a part of. What's that percentage? Doesn't matter. What matters if we're operating out of humility is that we're owning the fact that there's a problem and looking in the mirror about what percentage or what part of the problem are we uh, responsible for. I can, so, I can see that, like, you know, that budding, like you had mentioned, like so many, it's just hard sometimes because we don't always agree with every, like someone else's, you know, political stance or what they think or how they think. And, and so if you were to say, you know, here's someone who's been put in position and according to God's word, he was put there or she was put there by God and it's calling you to come under that person's authority but if we don't agree with what's going on up here that's tough like that that is but according to what God's telling us is we we have we should do that but um, it's just hard when when um, when, when somebody uses don't. that authority, uh, for example, when somebody takes advantage of that authority yeah. for their own benefit or gain, yeah, and that's when we run into the problems, and that's where those leaders run into resistance. Yeah, Re people begin to rebel, or or just I'm talking, or like the just the political side of stuff, right? Where if someone has been given a, a role of authority. And you don't agree with that authority, but yet you still are called the, to honor. Be, uh, honor it. Yep, to yeah. just come under it. That's A hard. Absolutely, it is hard. But here's the thing that's important for us. You know, at least in our country, you know, we have uh, a form of democracy. And every four years, the people have a say. They get yep. a vote. Um, sometimes uh, people that we voted for win the election and become the president, and sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Um, but as sons and daughters of the king, the ultimate uh, kingdom authority is God. Yeah. And we're called to honor our president, regardless of whether or not uh, we like him or even agree with his political um, opinions. Mm -hmm. And 
we need to honor the president, no matter who he is. And keep our mouth shut if we can't say something right nice. We need to keep our mouth shut. We should spend more time, in my opinion, we should spend more time praying for the president, especially the president you don't agree with. Or the leader, or the guy that's in charge of you, uh, your boss at work. You know, uh, prayer is the greatest weapon uh, that we have. Mm. Somebody said that the greatest weapon uh, on the planet Earth is found on our knees mm. through prayer. So we need to be praying for people and praying for our leaders. So, yeah, just Ruling gonna rain. continue to Ruling just rain. roll here. Because, yeah. uh, you know, we're gonna move into the final piece here of our, our um, bonus video and uh, production. And it has to do with that seventh day. And uh, verse uh, two, I'm sorry, chapter two, verse one says, so the creation of the heavens and earth and everything in them was completed. And on the seventh day, God finished his work of creation. So he rested from all of his work. And God blessed that seventh day and he declared it holy. So um, why do you think God rested, Scott? We talked about it in the, in the episode segment earlier, but why do you think he rested on that seventh day? Was he tired? No, of course not. <laughs> I mean, God doesn't get tired. I mean, he made everything, the heavens and the earth, of course not. And yeah, we talked about this, like it's for our benefit, had to have been for our benefit to show us an example of, hey, here's, here's how I did it. I created everything in six days and on the seventh day I rested. So I want you to follow that same example. And that not necessarily to like, you know, so a lot of times when we talk about this, people will bring up like the actual day, right? People are like, well, this has to be the day or that has to be the day. And there's like this big debate and it's just like, we've kind of talked about this. And it's like, look, I don't care what day you pick. This is a picky one day, like God said, pick one day to, to rest from what you're doing from your normal, um, from work. what we normally do, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm so grateful that he does that because if he didn't set up a day of rest, us as people, we'd never rest. I mean, we, 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 we get so busybodied, especially like here, um, here in America, like we are busy people, right? You got running the kids around and you're uh, doing all these things. You got the job and all these activities and all this stuff. Like if there was not that seven, uh, a day of rest, we, I don't even think we would ever take one. So mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that God did that. He set that up for us. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, God clearly does it. We should probably follow after what God tells us uh, and his example for us. Right. So he created, everything was created in six days. Yep. He rested on the seventh day. It doesn't say in the Bible what day we're supposed to rest. Nope. It just says that on the seventh day we're supposed to rest. And there are people that will debate you and argue and, um, uh, you know, it's about a day where we set it aside it becomes a Sabbath, mm -hmm. a day where we should be looking to God, honoring God, praying to God. The day should be about God. Our waking hours during that seventh day should be about our focus on our Heavenly Father. Because let's face it, nothing is more important. Nothing is more important than sitting down with your Father in Heaven. As a child, mm -hmm. there's really nothing more important to a child a real little kid than spending time with his or her parents when they're little. And we are children of God. Mm -hmm. God is all-knowing. We're not. So what better day, whether you make that a Saturday or a Sunday or a Friday or Thursday, doesn't matter. What better thing to do than mm -hmm. to take that seventh day and rest? And by the way, the whole calendar system was created around the seven days, right? 24 hour days, <laughs> Yeah. seven days in a week, mm -hmm. four weeks in a month, 12 months in a year, right? 10 years in a decade. It just goes on and on. And we've been experiencing this and it was all found here in the Bible. Yeah. This is where it started. God yeah. created the world he did it in six days. He rested on the seventh. And since then, we've been operating on that calendar. Nope. Now, um, some religions don't. Um, and, and 
that is what it is. But we do yeah. operate on that, which to me just lends credibility to you know, the faith of, of, of Jesus, uh, the faith of, the, of Christian life. Mm -hmm. What do you think? About, about what? <laughs> what part? I, I don't know. I'm just asking. What are you thinking? Oh, I'm just... Um, um, I, I, as you were like describing like that day, I was thinking about the day it, itself. All right, I know what I do with the other days, and I tend to take Saturday. That's just my example. I, I tend to take Saturday as considered a Sabbath day. But even in that, I find myself thinking, okay, I've done kind of work um, all week long, and a lot of times on those Saturdays are stuff that we plan as like something we'll do as a family, you know? So how do we still do that, but not also, like are we not taking a Sabbath by doing things as, as a family? Like what are, the, what are some of the examples where you can say um, that would help maybe the people, um, like our audience, that would help them say, all right, I'll take a Sabbath, but what am I supposed to do? Because some people think, okay, I'm gonna take a Sabbath. I'm just gonna nap and sit around all day. Or maybe I'll, I'll be, someone to say, maybe I'll even get too busy some days and I'll, I won't you know, rest or take that Sabbath day. So what are just maybe one, one or two things that you do on your Sabbath to give an example? Well, you know, first of all, I think the answer is really found in your relationship with the Lord. You know, um, if we were to use the example of um, that we see, uh, you know, from Judaism, for example, or if we were to go back farther and look at you know, some of the, the rules that the, um, that the Pharisees established. We have, to, we have to be careful, I think, in not creating uh, man-made rules, so to speak, mm -hmm. and then expecting others uh, to, to live up to those rules, right? Way. I mean, this was the issue Jesus had with the Sadducees and the Pharisees in yeah. general. I mean, Jesus really only criticized the religious leaders, mm -hmm. and he called them out, and he called them pretty tough names. I mean, he called them a den of vipers. He, he, <laughs> he called them hypocrites yep. because they had created all of these man-made rules and then they forced others um, that were, um, uh, that would look up to them to, to, to follow Do those things. things. So I think this comes back to relationship with the Lord. What uh, we don't want to do is just be robots. We don't want to you know, really, it's, it's, Lord, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Bring it to the Father. Pray mm -hmm. about it. I don't think the Lord would, would say, hey, Scott, I don't think it's a good idea that you spend uh, the day with your family today um, going to, you know, the, the water park. You yeah. know, I, I think, you know, as long as that day is a day that's set aside where your main focus is on Him mm -hmm. and where you're remembering Him, maybe... You know, for me, I, I like to read. And so, you know, on my Saturdays, I usually spend a good portion of my time throughout the day reading. And, you know, as I read, I learn, I take notes and, you know, but, but uh, you know, I'll spend time playing games and, you know, it's just with my family, you know, it's just, it's just gotta be a focus though, first I think on the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, there's freedom, that's what Christ died for, to bring us freedom from the rule yep. of law the biblical law, mm -hmm. because the law itself never saved anybody. You know, Jesus and what his finished work on the cross did is what is offered to the world that saves. That's why, you know, I say we need a saving faith because without that saving faith, and that saving faith is a faith in Jesus. When we say yes to him and, and, and respond to his request, then the Holy Spirit comes in and starts doing the rest. All we have to do is receive at the request of the Lord. He's always knocking on the hearts of the unbeliever. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to receive the invitation. And when we do, and we hear, and when we hear, and then we obey. And that's how, I guess, I'd approach it uh, as far as the Sabbath is concerned. 
Um, not setting up, Jesus didn't set up new, new sets of commandments when he, when he came. Uh. He didn't give us a new list of rules. He reemphasized the ones that were there and um, brought us through the Holy Spirit a clear understanding. So, yeah. All right. What about you? <laughs> what do you think about the Sabbath? Do you take a day of rest? Um, what do you think about the, the, the Trinity in that discussion? Mm -hmm. um, uh, we are we're interested in, in this dialogue with you. We're interested in uh, ongoing dialogue with you. So you can go to the show notes and, and click on the link um, that we've established there for you to be able to send us uh, emails so we can, we can have that dialogue. If you're a part of our Insiders Club, um, you know, th there are certain privileges, I suppose, or benefits that you get by being a part of the Insiders Club that, you know, that we would like to encourage you to check out. Uh, one of those is our, um, our monthly Zoom meeting with our uh, Insider Club members. So we're working to establish the date for that first one, and that's coming. Uh, we're hoping that you would be, uh, that you'd be a part of that and join us in those discussions. It's, uh, it's about relationship first with the Father and then with each other. And I guess that's really all we're trying to do. We're trying to learn about His ways, the Father's ways, His character by reading His Word. Yep. And um, as a result of that, we get to uh, build relationship with others. And so uh, I want to thank you again, Scott, for being a part of this. I wanna, we want to thank you as well. Um, for being a part of this, for listening. Uh, with that, uh, I guess what we'll do is just close out by saying we look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Uh, we'll be uh, moving into episode uh, three, uh, and that'll be released soon. So thank you. God bless. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to The Bible Breakthrough with Pastor David Engman and Scott Brecky. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and will join us again for more of the Bible from B.C. to A.D. We are a volunteer-driven ministry and rely on you to help us get the word out to the world. Please like this podcast on Facebook, share it to your page, and continue to listen on Apple Podcast, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. This has been a broadcast of the Breakthrough Media Network.